Here's an overview video of our 48 times zoom 4K Pantel zoom camera. That's part of the Avalonix premium security camera series that we carry here at CCTV Camera World. In the front of the camera, there's a large 48 times zoom lens. As you can see, that's in the center. This is an optical zoom lens. Infrared IRs are around the periphery of the lens. And there's a wiper as well to clean any debris. We suggest removing this plastic that's in front of the camera after you're done with installation. The camera is meant to be mounted on a flat surface from below, such as if it's on a flat roof or a pole with a proper mounting bracket. Optional mounting brackets are available as well. It comes with a sun shield that you have to attach using the bolts that are included in the packaging. So in the packaging, you get a pair of gloves, weather grommet to enclose the RJ45 pigtail connection to make sure it doesn't rust out the bolts that are used to bolt down the camera using its bottom mount and also to mount this sun shield to the top of the camera. And there's also a diagram that shows you how to mount the camera and attach the sun shield to give you an idea of the size of the camera. It's about 22 inches tall and we have full dimension in the product description. So it is a pretty large and hefty camera. It is heavy as well. I'm gonna show you the box that it comes in. So here's the box that the camera comes in. It has, it's enclosed within two pieces of large foam. The accessories will be on the top. Inside, the camera would be here, the top portion, and the bottom portion would be here. Carefully with the help of two people, lift the camera's top and bottom at the same time and lift it up. Usually the sun shield will come out first and then the rest of the camera. Make sure you don't drop it when you're taking it out and uh, you don't use excessive force. Either gently lift it up. Now I'm gonna show you the connections on the camera. The camera has a relatively long pigtail. I would say this is about three feet long. There are several connections on this pigtail. There's alarm input, audio input, but really, the, and even a BNC tester out for analog video testing. But this is not your main video out. Your main out is this RJ45 pigtail. You want to make sure you protect this and the gold pins inside of it using the weather grommet. Here's the weather grommet that comes in the box. Make sure you use that to connect and thread your, your cable that you're connecting to the camera through them and then onto here. So this is a watertight connection. I prefer you put these in a junction box, the whole pigtail, so that it doesn't get wet. It's not UV resistant. I don't suggest you leave it out. You may want to enclose it in a uh, some sort of flexible conduit as well. Now, besides the RJ45 connector, the other connection you need to be careful about is this 12, is this 36 volt connection here for power. Now on purpose, I've connected a power terminal here for you. And I'm going to show you what's, this is not the correct way to connect it. If you see it here, I have a little bit of wire showing. I'm going to try to get a good clear shot of this by putting it down. So you see that some of the wire is showing here. You don't want that happening because if water collects in between that or these two wires somehow touch each other, you're gonna short out the camera and damage it. Make sure there's no wire showing and the plastic jacket on the two little wires is inside the terminal, not outside of it. Now, the, here is the power supply that comes with the camera. This would connect to the power terminal we put on. We connect these two terminals on purpose before we ship them, so you have a good clear connection and you don't accidentally reverse the polarity. The red is positive, the black is negative. Should the red and black wires disconnect, you can reconnect them to these power terminals Using the screw terminal on the top, the red is positive, the black is negative, the positive is on the left hand side. You can see the markings clearly on the power terminals. Same way on the other one, this is a female power terminal here. That's on the camera's pigtail. Again, it has markings on it. Make sure you cleanly insert the wire in here if should it become disconnected. We always suggest before you go mount the camera, put it on a tabletop, connect it to power and test it out for yourself. One word of advice that when you bench test the camera, remove the plastic from in front of the camera 
save it using some sort of wax paper, such as a previously used label paper, and then put it back on when you go to install it so you don't scratch the front of the camera. This 48 times zoom, Pantel zoom camera, can actually be used in three different ways. It can be operated through the web interface. It is a IP camera. So you can use this on Windows. We'll show that later on. The second way it can be operated is through the NVR. You can set it up over the network and connect both the camera to the same switch where both the LAN connection on your NVR and the network connection from the RJ45 connector here go to the same switch or router so that you can access it over the network. The third way is you can use our phone app to also control the Pantel Zoom camera from anywhere in the world. As long as you have internet provided, fast broadband internet connection provided to the camera. Now keep in mind, when you're on Wi-Fi or you're over the internet controlling the camera, there will be delay in the movements you command on the camera. There may even be delays for the video that's being transmitted. So over the network, you get the best quality video. If you're trying to record this, it's best to have the NVR and the camera be on the same network. While some customers may choose to use this camera with their own NVR, please keep that in mind. You want to keep, have them on the same network, regardless of which NVR or software you use to record the camera. So I have the camera booted up, powered on already. Here's how you connect everything together. On the power connection, you connect the power supply. If you're mounting this on a building, most likely you have a power outlet nearby. This needs to be enclosed in a junction box that is weatherproof. The second connection, all you need is just this ethernet connection. Make sure it's enclosed using the weather grommet. In my case, I'm not doing that because I'm just testing it. And then that wire goes back to your network. It could be a switch, it could be a router. Now, this is using the power supply that comes included and your own cable connects to your switch. You could alternatively purchase some uh, what are called PoE adapters. What they do is they turn a non-PoE camera into a PoE camera. Now, this is a 36 volt DC power supply and it, you could run it over short distances up to 100 feet using CAT6 solid copper wire. What I said is CAT6 solid copper wire. It's important you have full copper in your cable and it's a CAT6 cable to go up to 100 feet to get this uh, PTZ camera the power it needs. You could use the CAT6 cable in between here. Basically, it's another Ethernet cable going in between the adapters. And then this power supply connector would connect into the female jack on this side. And this would connect into your switch. You could run that 100 feet cable in between. And then here, this connection would connect into the female terminal right here on the camera. And this Ethernet jack would connect into the Ethernet plug would connect into the Ethernet jack on the camera here. And that's pretty much it. Essentially, you need only two connections, one and two, power and data going into the camera. Now, I'll give you an idea. I've now got this camera going over my local network and the NVR is connected with one ethernet cable to the same network. This is a four camera NVR. You could have a larger NVR from us and then basically you can add it. So I'm gonna show you how with a click of some, you know, of my mouse, I'm gonna add the camera to the NVR. I'm gonna log in using my graphical password. And I already know the password I set on my camera, so I'm going to find it on the network. It is 192.168.109 in my case. And all I'm gonna do is hit the checkbox and hit add. The password on my NVR and my camera is exactly the same. So it seamlessly pulls up and that's how fast it was. Then using the mouse, I'm actually able to control the camera so I'm going to click some buttons on my mouse and I'm going to PTZ control. And I can zoom into. And zoom. And when you zoom in and you turn, it actually intelligently reduces the speed so that the camera is not spinning like R2D2 on you. And here you can see how clear this camera is and the resolution it picks up. I'm actually just looking at it through a monitor and it can pick up the mortar joints on the brick. I'm just looking at an exit sign to show you 
the level of clarity this camera produces. Now we're going to put this outside and show you what you can do. But the reason for showing all of this is actually that you can actually make a standalone system for this. So if you're in the military or you've got a top secret operation going on and you don't want anything connected to the internet, this is my internet cable. If I wanted to, I can disconnect it and using a switch or I could have actually run the cable from the camera, the data connection, right into my NVR as long as I've done some networking to put the correct IP address on the camera and the NVR and this light, these lights are blinking, I got data connectivity in between the two. And now I've got a standalone system. I'm gonna show you, I can still operate it. I'm using something called 3D targeting to draw a rectangle and zoom in on a certain area. So for those people who are looking for a standalone solution, we do sell standalone PTZ camera systems as well that if you wanted to, you could keep them standalone or you could connect your internet connection so you can watch them over the net if you wanted to. Hopefully this gives you an idea of the power of the Avalonics Premium Series systems and how easy they are to set up and the flexibility they offer in deployments such as standalone or with remote viewing. Now to give you an idea of the pan and tilt and zoom operations, the zoom is the lens moving there. And you can see the lens moving. This is actually zooming in, the, the, the optics move back, and then I'm zooming back out, and the lens comes forward. Now I'm gonna show you how high it can look up. This is the tilt mechanism. So if you have it mounted, this is how high it can look. I would say this is about 60 to 70 degrees above the horizon. So you can actually do some stargazing or moon watching if you want. We have a great picture here provided by one of our customers who has this camera. And he was able to look at the lunar surface with it using the built-in lens that this camera has. Now I'm gonna look all the way down. So the tilt can actually kind of look like a pelican putting its face down. And that's basically 90 degrees downwards. Now, turning, let me show you that I can, it has what's called an endless panning. So cheaper or smaller pan tilt zoom cameras do not have this ability to keep on going. We're gonna let it keep on going for two revolutions so you get a better idea. And you can do this in either direction if you wanted. You can stop and then go back the other way. Now, one thing to also note is, notice the operation is so quick. You can hear the click of my mouse in the background. You can show, see the video there too of it turning. And you can see how quick it is. So people looking for a quick solution, this is, this is it. This is where you're gonna get your money's worth. Now let me show you how is the video transmission. I'm gonna turn the camera to the side here so I can wave my hand and I'm gonna show you that screen right there. I'm gonna wave my hand now and you can see what kind of delay it has. This is inherent delay in IP video. So depending on network transmission on your network, there's gonna be that delay. No IP camera is completely real time. Data, especially this high resolution 4K, has to go from the camera to the NVR and you'll have some sort of transmission delay. So please keep that in mind when choosing IP cameras. There's nothing wrong with the camera or the equipment. This is how it is with IP video transmission. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.